Hello, my name is Matt Blanford, and today I'm going to be talking about the seismic design of shallow foundations. Uh, this is for CE566, which is Earthquake Engineering at the University of Idaho. Just to give you a brief introduction on the topic, uh, the, design of, the seismic design of shallow foundations is a fairly unproven topic of geotechnical engineering in that no universal design method has been established. Uh, many different models have been established through research, but there has not been one specific model that has been utilized nationally or even globally. Uh, research areas include settlement due to liquefaction, multi-directional seismic loading, and seismic, seismic hazard analysis. This presentation will talk briefly about the settlement due to liquefaction as well as some of the seismic hazard analysis. I'm just going to start off by giving you a brief background on shallow foundations and just some of the benefits and disadvantages of them. Uh, some of the benefits are they're relatively inexpensive to construct due to an easy construction procedure um, and also the lack of, of, of complex construction materials. Um, just simple concrete forms and rebar are utilized and there is mild labor demands uh, to install these forms or construct them. Uh, some of the disadvantages of a shallow foundation or using a solid foundation are more on the engineering side. Uh, these disadvantages include an increased settlement, um, limited capacity, also their shallow foundations are hard to construct on ir irregular ground surfaces, um, and also they're subject to pull out and overturning moments, which we'll be discussed a little bit later. Next, I just want to touch briefly on the seismic behavior of uh, shallow foundations. Uh, displacement or settlements can occur either laterally or vertically depending on the load type. Uh, the settlement will vary with soil type. Some soils are more susceptible to settlement than others. Uh, the relative density plays an important role in the overall settlement of the uh, soil layer in the foundation. This will be talked, in more detail, talked about in more detail later when I discuss liquefaction in uh, shallow foundations. Also the groundwater table and the level of it, where it is within the soil layers plays an important role in the overall settlement. One of the first steps of any engineering design problem is developing an adequate design process. For foundation designs, a more or less universally um, accepted design process has been established. Um, the following design process consists of many different steps that can be worked in any pretty much any order. Uh, one of the first things that needs to be done though is a soil site profile needs to be established for a particular site. Um, this is based off of the existing geotechnical environment. Uh, loading conditions induced by the superstructure must be f uh, tabulated in order to perform engineering design work which relies on determining the capacity of the foundation and several different factors of safety. All of this must comply with building code requirements for the expected performance of the structure. Um, proper construction methods must be incorporated in order to provide a safe and timely and economical design for the particular foundation. And finally, the design process concludes with a risk analysis, which must be determined in order to produce an accurate design. In order to properly design a foundation, an engineer must incorporate seismic design parameters for that particular foundation. Uh, the seismic design of foundations includes incorporating static loads, which are dead, live, and tectonic loads. The dead and live loads are loads that will be induced by the building to be built on the foundation or the structure to be built on the foundation. Dynamic loads incorporate loads that are created during ground movement or earthquake shaking. Uh, a seismic factor of safety must be established and deemed adequate for the design to continue or be chosen. Uh, also there are settlement requirements uh, needed. Uh, the picture below here on the right bottom right corner is a picture of a mat foundation which uh, mat foundations usually induce uh, uniform settlement, which is wanted in a structure, often wanted in a structure rather than just one end of the structure settling more than another. Um, right here, you can see there's a liquefied zone um, that's drawn in, and 
Matte foundations help transfer loads from liquefiable zones, liquefiable zones into stronger ground areas so that the settlement can be indeed be uniform. Liquefaction in shallow foundations can be very problematic in that it can increase this overall settlement that the structure will see. Uh, liquefaction can occur in two different, by two different means. Uh, there's flow liquefaction and cyclic mobility. The susceptibility of a particular site can be analyzed based off of historical data, geological criteria, compositional criteria, and state criteria. State criteria refers to the existing state of the foundation and its subsequent soil layers. The picture here at the bottom right just shows some buildings that have uh, been tipped over and collapsed due to settlement that has been induced by liquefaction, increased settlement. Uh, this settlement was created due to the famous earthquake that happened in Nagata, Japan on June 16, 1964. This earthquake had a magnitude of 7.4. To get a first hand account of the effects of liquefaction in shallow foundations, I evaluated some research performed by Lee Lu and Ricardo Dorby. Their research included investigating the effects of soil compaction on liquefaction, as well as the effects of soil permeability on liquefaction. They found that the deeper layers were compacted below foundations, the less likely liquefaction was to occur. They also found that compacted layers uh, prolong the effects of liquefaction and the effect that liquefaction may occur. Uh, the effects of soil per permeability on liquefaction that they found were that with a decreased permeability there was less overall settlement experienced in the foundation. They also found that less permeable, permeable soils experience more settlement after ground shaking has been concluded and this is due to the rate at which poor water pressures generated during sh ground shaking dissipated. This diagram here just shows the effects of liquefaction on a soil layer. As you can see, the, before the ground shaking occurs, the water is compressed and stored within the soil. And once some sort of movement is applied to the soil, uh, liquefaction occurs where water is released and the soil becomes more loose, which can increase the chances that settlement actually occurred. In conclusion, I just wanted to wrap things up with talking about how there still is not one universally accepted design model for the seismic design of shallow foundations. This opens the door for many different research opportunities um, that may be able to develop a adequate design model. Um, it's also important to note that liquefaction is affected by soil compaction and soil permeability, and liquefaction is highly important in the design of shallow foundations in order to produce foundations that do not settle a significant amount causing damage to the structure built on them.